my, oh my! Is that a budding theme park proprietor I see before me? I certainly hope so. Otherwise, you're in quite the wrong place, and none of what I'm about to say will make any sense to you. I am Oswald B. Thompson, theme park empresario, and I am here to help you take your first steps in this most exciting of professions. And because it's a first step, we're starting in a somewhat humble location. A charming little park which, as yet, has not fulfilled its undoubted potential. A park where you will begin to hone your skills. So, first things first, you should learn how to navigate around the park. Moving, rotating, zooming, almost as if you were riding a roller coaster. A massive, invisible roller coaster. Look at that! You've completed an objective! Now, objectives are a bit like bosses. They tell you what you need to do, earn more money than you, and drive a sports car. No, that's not right. Anyway, how about completing another objective? Uh, if I could butt in and make a suggestion, how about you make your next objective opening up literally the only ride in your park? Why is it even closed? Oh, hello, Lucy. This is Lucy Summers, one of the most enthusiastic and outspoken theme park fans in the world. She's got almost 800 followers. You know, online, not in a cult. Hi there. And it's 900, but who's counting? <laughs> so, the ride? Ah, yes, opening rides. Go on, select the ride. Good! And now, open the ride! You did it with such gusto! Well done! And now that we have such an adorable, gentle ride open, more guests, especially families, will soon be flooding into the park. You know, you could turn that flood into... a bigger flood. This place just needs something a bit more thrilling. Well, if people want thrills, then we'll give them thrills. And possibly nausea. Head over to the highlighted area. I think it'll make an excellent location for a ride. But let's ask our head engineer, Eugene. Greetings, Eugene Newton. Good to make your acquaintance. And yes, Mr. Thompson, I think it will do nicely. The proximity to existing infrastructure appears nominal, so guests should be able to achieve both entry and exit with minimal difficulty. So, if you would start by clearing the highlighted area of any obstructions, please. And do not fret, those items will automatically be sold, so we will get at least some of the purchase price back. Oh, just a word about the radial menu. The radial menu gives you fast access to commonly used actions. Please note that the options available in the radial menu will change depending on the mode you're in. Very good. Now, I've already chosen a suitably thrilling ride for you, so if you would care to select it. A 
and place it in the designated area. Now, it's very important that when you place the entrance gate, you make sure to leave enough space so you can build a ride queue. Next up, connecting your ride to the park, so people can reach it. Now, that queue you're building is where guests will wait in line to go on the ride. Good. And now you should build a path from the exit gate back to the rest of the park. For that, you can simply use normal paths. Oh, and if you do find any obstacles or obstructions in your way, you can build slopes or stairs into your path to get over them. And finally, you can open the ride. No, no, that's not how we do it, is it, Eugene? Apologies, I meant... And finally, you can... Open the ride! Oh, yeah, that's more like it! You're gonna get way more teenagers like me and my followers visiting the park now. Ah, don't you just love teenagers? So much disposable income. Cynthia! I didn't see you there. Please, allow me to introduce... Cynthia Clark, Chief Financial Officer. It's my job to make sure these places turn a profit. Speaking of which, thanks to that new ride, the park's rating has gone up. And you know what that means. Cake? We can start charging the guests more money. Okay, very well. A necessary evil, I suppose. <laughs> evil. Did you see that notification? Even the guests think we're undercharging them. Let's do them a favour and fix that. That's right. Take a good look at the notification. It'll tell you what we need to alter the prices of. Oh, look. It's that family-friendly little ride of ours. Go on. Put the ticket prices up by a few dollars. That seems a wee bit steep. Oh, honestly, Oswald. The people visiting this park aren't just getting to ride rides. They're getting to make precious memories. So if we put the ticket prices up then we're making those memories even more precious, aren't we? Oh, no. That actually makes sense. Wait. No, it doesn't. Lower ticket prices make guests happy. I know we're in the happiness business, Oswald, but we're also in the staying in business business. Look. 
If you're so worried, why don't we have your new underlings select a few guests and see what they're thinking, eh? Underling, indeed. They are a trainee, and they have a name. Although I just realised I don't know it. See? That guest didn't seem too put off by the higher price, did they, Oswald? Yes, but their happiness is our bread and butter. So, it's important to regularly check what the guests are thinking. Well, I didn't see anything to worry about there. Come on, let's just hit fast forward, sit back, and let the money roll in for a while. At least until we've made a healthy profit. Well done on hitting Cynthia's profit forecast. Honestly, I was worried it was a little high, but as always, she knows just how hard to squeeze the guests' wallets. <laughs> anyway, now that we've made some money, we can make some improvements. Oh, but don't forget to slow things back down to normal speed again. After all, it's not a good idea to build a park on fast forward. You might miss out on an important notification, or a ride breaking down, or all your staff leaving, or, heaven forbid, my birthday. Anyway, congratulations! You've just earned yourself a bronze star. The first of many, I don't doubt. All right, it's high time we talked about taking care of guests and improving the park. We want those guests to be happy, happy, happy. Ooh, you're planning on making improvements? That's good. I didn't like to say, but part of this place looks like the theme park that time forgot. So if you want to scoot over, I'll take things from here for a while. Actually, Lucy, I was about to say... Scoot, scoot. Okay, first things first. I know how I feel about the park, but let's see how one of the other guests is feeling. Go on, select one of the guests to see how happy they are. Now, that level of happiness might be good enough for most parks, but I still think this guest would be a bit happier if a big chunk of the park wasn't super lame. Don't worry, it's not your fault. That one's on Mr. Thompson. I hardly think that's fair. Don't worry, I've highlighted the problem area. So go on. Stick down some scenery. Make it look all piratey. Oh, yeah. Us guests love having interesting things to look at. Cheers us right up. Is a bit nicer. Uh, I don't believe I said unscoot yet, did I? So, another place it's super important to put scenery is around the ride queues. <gasps> Ooh, you know what? We should compare both of your rides so we can see the difference. 
Go and select that first ride you opened, would you? You see how it's got a high Q scenery rating? Because of that, the ride's prestige is higher, too. Us guests are way less interested in rides with boring cues, and so we won't pay as much to ride them. Right, now go and have a look at that new ride you built. Okay, so that's not nearly as prestigious as it could be, but you can fix that by giving us guests some eye candy to look at while we wait. Go on, stick some nice scenery down around the queue. Come on, admit it. Isn't that better? And if you check, I bet you'll see that the ride's Q scenery rating and prestige has gone up as a result. Excellent. That means we can also raise the ticket price. Go on, put it up by a few dollars. Ah, oh, heck. I really didn't think this through, did I? Oh, my! Look at all that wonderful new scenery! Well done! Oh, and if I'm not mistaken, by raising this park's scenery rating, I think you might have... Yes, you have! You've raised the overall park rating! And that means more guests will be drawn to the park. Heavens, what an important number, eh? Look, I know Oswald likes to treat our guests like royalty, but that doesn't mean we should charge a king's ransom for the rides. Right, I think it's time we took a look at the park rating breakdown. It's a great way to track how your park is improving. That's it. In here, you can see how your overall ride and scenery ratings and guest happiness are all critical to improving your park rating. And remember, the better your park, the more guests who will come and visit. So, let's get that scenery rating even higher, eh? Make the whole park look as wonderful as those rides you spruced up. Go on, get decorating! Hello again. I just noticed that you were using the scenery blueprints to decorate the park. I actually built those blueprints myself, so I'm very happy that you're using them. You can actually find the individual scenery elements, the ones I used to build those blueprints, by looking under the Create browser, if you want to. But, uh, as I mentioned, I did go to the trouble of painstakingly handcrafting literally hundreds of them for you, so, you know...
Goodness, your transformation of the park has really bumped the park rating up a good few notches, my friend. And look at all the guests, happily smiling away. And you know what they say about happy guests? They like spending money. Oh, is everything about cold, hard cash with you, Cynthia? No, I also like stocks and shares. Anyway... Guests have other needs which can affect their happiness. So, let's take a look at some of them. Yes, let's. Scoop! Right. If you want to find out what us guests need, one way is by looking at the guest screen in Park Management. Go on, open it. This is where you can see what the average guest needs are in the park, as well as the most common thoughts that the guests are having. You know, it's weird. I really should think of this thing as a massive invasion of privacy, but I'm kind of okay with it. Yeesh. It looks like a lot of the guest thoughts are about how the park is missing important facilities. Hmm. Huh. Okay, first up, food. According to the guest data, we're hungry. Huh. I was wondering what that empty feeling in my stomach was. So go on, build a food shop for us. That's the food sorted. But a bunch of us guests are also really thirsty. So you should definitely build some drink shops. A word of advice. Put your shop somewhere busy, 
so we get the best return on our investment. Sorry, I mean, best serve our guests' needs, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Real convincing. Shop vendors don't work for free. We have to turn a profit. About time. My blood sugar was almost down to a healthy level. If you want to make sure that you've got all our needs licked, you can look at the guest needs screen again. Personally, I am absolutely stuffed with both food and drink, so I'm good. No, <clears throat> without meaning to be indelicate, all that food and drink means we have another pressing guest need to attend to. Yeah, like really pressing? Quickly! Build a toilet for the guests. What? A whole toilet? You're spoiling us, Mr. Thompson. <sighs> you know, toilets are great, but it'd be nice if us guests had somewhere else to sit down, too. Oh, yes. Go on, pop down some benches next to the paths. You see, guests are a lot like cellular phones. Every so often they need to recharge their batteries, so you should plug them in and... No, that's not right. Now that your guests can fulfill their needs in the park, 
they're less likely to become unhappy, which is great. But as more guests come here, you'll need even more facilities to deal with their needs. More than one toilet? No! Hey, it's quite a lot to think about, isn't it? Plus, the park's getting a bit more complex, and we might start to see problems popping up. I think we should look at hiring some staff to keep everything running smoothly. Speaking of problems, can you do something about all the litter? It's piling up and really bumming us guests out. Maybe you could hire some janitors to keep on top of it. Thanks for that. Of course, litter wouldn't be such a problem if Mr. Thompson had remembered to put some bins in the park. <clears throat> that was deliberate. So we could all have a learning moment. <clears throat> so yes, if you would please put some bins down, your new janitors will make sure they're kept empty. Oh yeah, good save. No! Goodness me! One of the rides has broken down! How could this happen in one of my parks? Oh, it's all right. Everyone on the ride and in the queue is getting a refund. <gasps> Refunds? Quick, hire a mechanic. We need to fix that ride and get money flowing in the right direction again. Oh, and make the guests happy, etc. Ah, good. I'm sure our new mechanic will have that ride fixed in no time at all. <laughs> Not without breaking the space-time continuum, they won't. <laughs> uh... You might want to consider speeding up time for a while. Well, now that our emergency has been dealt with, the mechanic can spend their time inspecting the rides and reducing the chance of another breakdown. Now, I think it's high time you built a staff room for our staff so that they can have a bit of a break. I mean, do they really need to? Yes, you see, staff are a lot like cellular phones. No, wait, I've tried that one before. Anyway, just like guests, staff members get tired as well. And if they get too tired, they simply won't be able to work. Staff rooms are where they get their energy back. And now that we have a staff room, the vendors in our shops will be taking breaks too. So, you should hire some extra vendors to fill in for them. Ah. Oh. Gosh, you've got so many people working for you that there might not be enough space in the staff room anymore. You'd better increase the staff room's capacity just in case. Look at you! Oh, you're a born manager! 
Congratulations. <laughs> Pretty soon, you'll be hiring entertainers to lift the spirits of your guests and hiring security guards to deal with pickpockets and ne'er-do-wells. And, well, partly to stop Lucy constantly cutting in line. You can worry about all of that in your own time, though. Goodness, just look at how you've grown the park. It's like they say about tiny acorns. Don't eat them. No, that's not it. Anyway, just time for a few final management lessons before I let you loose on the world. Now, these first few of the last few lessons will mostly be focusing on finance. Which is why I'll be handling them. You can get started by looking at the overall finances of the park in the finance section of park management. Come on, money's a-wasting. Ah! This is my happy place. Just look at all those fiscals. You can get a very solid idea of how your park's finances are doing here. And looking at it, your rides are doing well. But I think your shops could be doing better. Open up the Attractions and Shops panel. As you can see, this section gives you an overview of how your shops and facilities are doing. Ah, and as I thought, you could definitely stand to raise your food and drinks prices by a half dollar or so. Happy guests don't mind paying a little extra. You can also raise the prices of ATMs, toilets, even the first aid facilities. But it's a good idea not to get too greedy with those. Just greedy enough. Yes, that's better. It's hardly a lottery win, but we are seeing a bit more profit, which means... That I get to interrupt you for once. We should put some of that money into researching a roller coaster. After all, guests eventually tire of old rides. So, putting money into ride research is essential if you want to keep a park fresh or expand it. 
Oh, my. Oh, yes. You should begin research at once. Now that the research is in hand, we should take a look at the staff again, because their happiness is just as important as the guests' happiness. Go on, take a look at your staff list. Good! See, if a staff member is unhappy, then they won't be as effective at their job. And if they're really unhappy, they might even quit entirely. Anyway, I think it's high time we gave some of our staff a raise, don't you? No. That wasn't directed at you, Cynthia. So, check if any of your staff members aren't as happy as they could be. And, if so, bump their wages up a notch or two. There, that's a start. Now, if a staff member's workload is too high, it means that they aren't able to keep on top of all their duties, which will make them unhappy. One way around that is hiring more staff. But a more efficient way to deal with it is through staff training. So, train up some of your staff. Once you've chosen who to train, they'll soon toddle off to the staff building to receive their training and complimentary donuts. Oh, yes, you clearly know how to care for your staff. Now that you've addressed their wages, workloads and training, they'll be showering you with world's best boss mugs in no time. And that means you're ready to learn about... Building roller coasters! Oh my, oh my! They're expensive things, but a theme park isn't a theme park without one. Eugene, take it away. Take what away? Oh, I understand. If you could reveal the newly researched coaster blueprint, please. Well, that was needlessly over the top. Oh, but that is quite an exciting new coaster. That could easily hit 4.28 on the Eugene Thrill Rating Scale. And now that you have a new coaster type, you can place coaster blueprints for it. Or even build a coaster from scratch. But you should probably walk before you run. Now, open the coaster browser and select the blueprint. And place it in a suitable location. Here's some money. Think of it as a scholarship. Oh, look at that! Your first coaster! You must feel so proud. OM gosh, out of my way, I'm gonna ride that thing! Sorry, not just yet, Lucy. For while the construction of the coaster is finished, we are not. First, the coaster has to be tested to make sure it is safe. If you could do that, please. You know, if it's just about signing a safety waiver, then I'm actually cool with that.
Now, looking at the telemetry data, the fear and nausea ratings are well within tolerable levels for guests, which means this ride is perfectly safe. Of course, that was to be expected with a prefabricated blueprint ride. When you build coasters from scratch, things can go... differently. OK, when you've connected it up to the rest of the park, you can open the coaster. Eugene! Again, apologies. Open the coaster! Much better! And what a fine coaster! But you're not done yet. You should adorn the track with plenty of wonderful scenery. Give the guests something exciting and unique to see as they whiz around those twists and turns. Oh, and of course, scenery will also improve the ride's prestige. You could use animatronics. They are extremely effective, although they will incur running costs. And, of course, there's all those wonderful scenery blueprints that Eugene made for you. Indeed. I really cannot overstate how long it took me to make those for you. Will you look at that? Are you sure you haven't done this before? We should immortalize your coaster by saving it as a blueprint. Okay, okay. So, you'll need to multi-select everything you want to include in your blueprint. Go on. Now, go and create a blueprint and you'll be able to make as many copies of your coaster as you like. Or at least can afford. Oh, don't forget to give your blueprint a good name and an exciting screenshot. And make sure to add any tags you want to it so you can find it easily later. Now you've made a blueprint, you'll find it in the Coasters browser. But there's also somewhere even more exciting. The workshop. You see, blueprints are a lot like sandwiches. You can share them with other people, and they contain pickles. No, that's not it. But just imagine it. Sharing your blueprints with the world. With the world sharing what they've built right back. That's what the workshop can do for you. Whew! Well, <laughs> that was a lot of work, wasn't it? I think it's time you enjoyed the fruit of your labours by riding your coaster, don't you? Go on, select it, and get on! whenever you like. You know, just in case you're feeling a little bit wobbly in the tum-tum.
Congratulations. Uh, oh, I'd slap you on the back, but you look a wee bit queasy. Even so, I think you're ready to start your, no doubt, illustrious career in park management. What wonderful news. Because it means you can start paying back the time and effort that Oswald's invested in you. And, if you would let me, I would dearly love to teach you the intricacies of building a coaster from the ground up. Oh, or ground down if it's subterranean. And I'm going to tag along because my season pass gives me free entry anyway. Oh, and to watch you uh, grow as a manager, obviously. Not that you haven't grown already. Just look at this park. At your park! Full of happy guests, making precious but reasonably priced memories. You should be proud of yourself. But this is just the start. Are you ready for the next step? <laughs>